Next up is the Virginia Cavaliers. And last year was a very, very interesting season. Um, they did go through a coaching change. Bronco Hall decided he did not want to make changes on his staff. And in doing so, uh, he just decided he was going to retire. He's been doing this long enough. He's made enough money. He doesn't really give a rip anymore. So Robert and I, his offensive coordinator, has headed off to Syracuse to be their offensive coordinator, who we talked about on the previous show. But the new head coach is former Clemson offensive coordinator Tony Elliott. And it's strange that this hire happened right after Elliott was the offensive coordinator on one of the worst Clemson offenses we've seen in a very, very long time. Was that his fault? Was it the Clemson system? Was this just him getting out of Dodge before things go really south at Clemson? Who knows, right? If you're going to take a a Power 5 head coaching job, you might want to go ahead and grab that thing, right? I think that Virginia is a pretty good landing spot for him because obviously you're walking in, you've already got your quarterback figured out. You look at this team and the way that they were built last year, the defense was just putrid. Uh, But when you look at total plays per game, this is another one of those defenses, which surprised me the most about Pitt, by the way. This is a defense that was on the field a lot. This team ran the number 17 most plays per game in the country. This is nuts. I mean, they they were number 117 in PPA per drive on defense, but number five on offense. So you, you won't find a bigger difference than these guys last year. This defense was just putrid. We'll, uh, we'll start off, remember, the biggest losses here, they lost their entire offensive line. They lost the tight end, Jelani Woods, um, the defensive end, uh, Mandy Alonzo, I mean, et cetera. They, they, lost, they, well, they lost some dudes, I mean, big time, and, and a lot of them to transfer, et cetera. The, the new offensive coordinator is Des Kitchings. He was the Falcons running back coach, a former NC State co-offensive coordinator. Uh, I, don't, I don't know a lot about him. I'm not going to lie. I don't know a ton about what he did when he was at NC State. Um, but who knows? I mean, I, I trust Tony Elliott, I think. I think. Brendan Armstrong is the key here. He's got plenty of receiving threats. He's got Wicks. He's got the tight end Mish back. Uh, he doesn't have a single starting offensive lineman back, as I mentioned. Uh, look, Anai, the, the former offensive coordinator, threw the ball 62% of the time that or last year. Do they continue that philosophy, or do they balance it up a little more so that they can help the defense out? That's what I'm curious about when it comes to this offense this year. So, uh, I do, now that we're going to talk about this defense, I think they made an absolutely phenomenal hire on defense. John Radzinski, he spent the last four years as the Air Force defensive coordinator. Air Force number four in total defense in 2021. So, this was a monster hire for them. Uh, Defense was a disaster. In 2021, for Virginia, they lost linebacker Taylor, defensive end Alonzo Hurts. Uh, if you change philosophies on offense, maybe that's going to help you out a little bit more, keep your defense off the field more. Uh, they were number seven in offensive plays per game, number 98 in defensive plays defended per game. That's just, I mean, just ridiculous. Just ridiculous. Uh, Radzinski's defense, number 16 in yards per run uh, allowed last year. That's 3.43 yards allowed. Virginia was number 123 in that metric. Uh, the linebacker Nick Jackson should help, uh, along with the transfer defensive end Cam Butler. I'm I'm so curious about this because I don't know that the personnel that he's got right now is what Radzinski wants to work with, but he has been a whiz at figuring out how to stop the run with whatever he's got. That's what he did at Air Force for all those years. Like, I think he's been there at D.C. since 2018, if I'm not mistaken. Um I'm I'm interested. I'm interested for sure. Keys to the season, by the way, they're projected favorites in seven games, which I found a little bit surprising, uh, especially with all that they lost. They're number 80 in returning production in the country, number uh, 58% coming back. That's number 96 on defense, number 75 on offense. As far as defense goes, you're only bringing about 55% returning production. Maybe that's a good thing. Like, if you've already got a bad defense, why would you bring back the same guys and expect them to get better? I don't know. But, uh, keys to the season. Can a defensive shift to focus on stopping the run improve the defense, even if the talent is lacking? Uh, The transfers should help on the defensive line. At least you would hope they would. Curious if the completely rebuilt offensive line will be able to block for the quarterback Armstrong. If so, he's got a ton of weapons they'll be able to work with. Other Clemson offensive coordinators that have taken head coaching jobs, 
have not fared so well. Chad Morris, Jeff Scott, what is Tony Elliott's team going to look like? Is this going to be just a rebrand of Clemson, of the same system, or is he going to do some stuff outside of the box? That's what I want to know. The win total is 7.5, and and it's juiced heavily to the under, and I'm going to side with that. I think this is a 6-6 and football team. I don't... I mean, you look at the schedule, yeah, there's there's some wins here that they should be able to get, especially early. Even still, I, with all the change going on here, I think it's going to take some time for them to really get into it. They got some layups, though. I mean, you got at Duke, you got Old Dominion, you got Richmond, you got uh, at Georgia Tech, uh, you got Coastal Carolina coming in, which I think could be very interesting. You play at Virginia. Uh, there's, I think there's plenty of losses on here. Uh and I'm looking at the way that I'd set this up, and I've got win loss, win loss, win loss, win loss, win loss, win loss. I've got them six and six, <laughs> basically never winning two in a row, never winning or never losing two in a row either. Um, I I don't think this is a team that's going to win the conference. I don't think they're going to win the division. I do think Brennan Armstrong is going to put up some crazy numbers, but I think this is another one of those where the coaching change and the philosophical changes are going to maybe give them some losses that you wouldn't expect and wins that you wouldn't expect. And I, I think you should expect that for most ACC teams. So uh, so I've got them 6-6. Six and six. I like Virginia. I just I don't like them that much this season. I think moving forward, maybe things can be really good. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, Brendan Armstrong is going to be a lot of fun. I just don't know that it necessarily equates to a bunch of wins. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.